Uh, we've already had one main feature that did change. We used to have the mini-map in the game. Uh, we get a lot of feedback that it wasn't too Elder Scrollsy as is. And we were working on a compass, and we actually put it into beta, and the feedback has been very good about the compass. Also, we're getting feedback that we need more added to it. We need more functionality. So the feedback has changed one feature already. That's not to say it won't change more or less when we ship, but uh, we got a good, uh, a good three months of closed beta done already, and we're still going to be doing betas all the way up until when we launch. Uh, the press has been pretty good so far. A lot of feedback has been, thankfully, that it's Elder Scrolls Online. You know, it's 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 what we say it is. It's you play with your buddies, but you're playing in Elder Scrolls games. You're playing um, with your friends in lore and locations, and using any weapon, using any armor. People are like, "Yep, it's Elder Scrolls. It's great." Sure. Um, in Cyrodiil, that's the only real PvP space. There are about 18 keeps across the whole area, and each alliance gets six natively given to them. So it gives you a sense of ownership. If somebody comes and takes one of your keeps, you're more apt to get that keep back as opposed to deep striking, but then you want to go deep in enemy territory and take their keeps back for revenge. Uh, all the keeps are linked together in a transit line, so if you take a keep that is integral to the transit of the enemy, you can pretty much cut them off, and they have to get that back to get the transit back up and running. Uh, you can isolate enemies. We actually had a, a 200 person or so fight last Friday back at the studio and me and, uh, me and one of the testers, we were running around and just lighting up keeps just by ourselves to kind of make them go under attack and stop, stop respawning at it for a moment. I mean, it was just two of us, so we really couldn't, they came out of there and killed us, but it was still fun to run around and just have, you know, a couple people affecting a war like that's pretty awesome. Yeah, uh, there's actually uh, all, all, there are about five towns or five cities that are still in Cyrodiil at this point in time that we took upon ourselves to make them have a story in and of their own little sections of the world. Uh, Coral has kind of had an earthquake and there's some things you need to, you see there like one of the bars is off kilter and you go inside the bar and everybody's drinking and the bartender's like, oh, we had to nail the, everything down because of the earthquakes all the time. Uh, they all, all those people there have issues not only with the town and the earthquakes and the elementals springing up, but also going to um, Cropsford is another town that's not so developed in Oblivion, but it's much more developed in our timeline, 700 years or so in the past. And they all have issues that they need help with, so it's not just about killing, there's other things to do in Cyrodiil. Uh, no, there, there are guards, but they're of guards of the Alliance that owns a nearby keep. So there'll be a few guards patrolling the area, and actually the NPCs in there will react a little bit differently depending upon which alliance owns that keep. If you're an Old Mary player and Old Mary owns a keep nearby, the NPCs may say things like, oh, thank God Old Mary owns the keep because I couldn't stand having somebody else own it. And that character is a high elf character saying those words. So it's interesting to see the different uh, phrasing that we put in there depending upon who owns what in Cyrodiil. Uh, well, it's, it's perpetual. The zone stays open all the time. And if it's an undefended keep, meaning no players and only NPCs defending it, it's about 10 to 12 minutes for a group of 15 players. Um, if you take a keep that has players in it, it's, it's going to take a lot longer. Uh, they're built for the outside walls as sort of like a playground for the attackers to kind of work their way in. But when you get to the intersections of it, it's pretty hard to take if it's defended very well by defenders. But if it's just, you know, just NPCs, if you have a well-organized group, it's about 10 to 12 minutes to get in there. Well, the interface is entirely moddable. It's all with Lua, so it, you can pretty much put in any mod you want. Uh, we're not doing things along the lines of full-on content replacement or anything along those lines just yet, but uh, at launch, you'll be able to mod the UI any way you want. Uh, well, it's got tons of depth to the character development, the fact that you can use any armor, any weapon, get more skills as you're going throughout the world. There's Mage's Guild, Fighter's Guild skills. So you're not really pinned into one type of character class. Uh, we have people every week that come up with different builds for different classes all the time. I've seen uh, sorcerers with heavy armor dual wielding. I've seen uh, knight blades in heavy armor with a two-handed axe. So there's all kinds of things that let you build your character as you want to build it, but there's also the PvP, and there's also when you get through your own alliance, you can actually play in the other alliances too at level 50. The content's scaled up and you can experience their stories as well. So it's not just like you're locked into one 
one third of the content. You get to experience all of it, and that's also very cool. Uh, there's things that I'd like to get into the game. Uh, we're working on some balancing issues right now to handle population and things dealing with uh, specific scoring imbalances that may occur in there with, with three sides. It pretty much balances itself out for the most time in terms of during all hours, but there's sometimes one alliance can, can get a little boisterous and take a lot of keeps and then that could put the other two alliances at a disadvantage. We want to make sure that you never feel like you're so far behind that you got to catch up. So we're making sure that there's population ways to catch up and there's also scoring ways to catch up. Uh, I'd give more information about that, but those are still in development. Um, they will be tested soon, but I want to make sure that you never feel like there's a mountain that's too high that you can never climb to get back into a fight. It's got to be uh, even enough that if you're winning, you feel like you're really winning and the other guys really want to take the winner out, not feed off each other. Uh, that's still way, way off, yeah. Um, we, are, we have beta sessions, I'd say maybe once every couple of weeks now, and we're really getting a lot of people in there, not only making sure that the systems are great, that the, the quests are fun, but also that our servers can handle all the load, and that you know the expected results of not only player activities, but also our economy is doing well too. So we're testing all aspects of the game, not just the fact of, hey, are the quests fun, or hey, does your character play right? We're making sure the game plays great as a whole.